the world of Abominable. Abominable is a film, ultimately it's a film about a group of kids who find a, a, a young girl who finds a Yeti on her roof and has a mission to get him home. That's what it is on paper, but the real journey is kind of the idea of what home is. What does home mean to people? What does home mean after loss? What does home mean when you are a young person trying to figure yourself out? Mm. And um, yeah, that's abominable. Um, you play Yi in the movie. Yeah. Uh, I know she's partly based on Jill, the director, partly mm. based her on herself, her mm. own sort of attitude. So how did you go about finding your own version of Yi? You know, Yi was so, uh, there's, She's so similar to how I was as a child. I mean, we are, I, I was such a tomboy. I was such like a, like a busy bee, stubborn, creative, kind of independent kid who just wanted more out of everything. And it got me into trouble a lot in a similar way that it gets ye into trouble. But um, she's the anti-princess. She's that tom, she's the character for the girls who like watch princess movies and they're like, that's cool, I respect that, but... Yeah. I, that's not enough for me. I don't see myself in that, and that's that's what we have with you. Um, do you believe that yetis exist, and would you want one hanging around if they do? Yes, yetis do exist, and I do want one. <laughs> um, uh, so often in animated movies, you don't always get to act alongside the rest of the cast. Sometimes mm. you're just in a booth doing yeah. your thing. I have seen footage of you and Albert and, and Tenzing doing some yes. scenes <laughs> together, one or two scenes together. How much fun is it to actually get to just be there with the gang and just... We actually, I guess we, yeah, that yeah. that was more of like, this is what it would be like. But we actually did right. film it separately. We did voice uh, the most, of, I did 99% of the film um, with Jill, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, me and Tenzing did one scene together where we really, uh, 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 in the in the bamboo forest scene, um, but it it was a really interesting practice of imagination, mm. and uh, it was incredibly exhausting. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Chloe Bennett. I'm Tenzing Norgay Trainer, and I'm Albert Tsai. And we voice Yi Jin and Peng in the upcoming film Abominable from DreamWorks and Pearl Studio. Happy Mid Autumn Festival! It's a Chinese holiday that celebrates friends and family, sort of like the Chinese version of Thanksgiving. To celebrate, we are about to try some mooncakes, a traditional mid autumn treat. In Chinese culture, the roundness of the mooncake symbolizes completeness, like the full moon and the unity of families. So excited. Are you guys ready? What? Bring us the mooncake. Yes. These are white lotus seed with yolk. Oh, these yeah. are the type I like. Um, Can you see the yolk in there? Mm -hmm. I like these. Oh, it's like breakfast. Okay, we got another one red bean and dried orange peel. Definitely tasting yeah. that orange. Orange peel. Yeah. Pineapple mm -hmm. walnut. Oh. oh, I like this one. Do I have any of it in my teeth? No, you look, you look good. You look great. Oh, look good. Okay. Thanks, yeah. guys. You guys always have my back. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Mid Autumn Festival. Thank you guys for watching and make sure to catch Abominable in theater September 27th. Yeah, I mean, it's, first off, it's just like an incredibly authentic story for me, you know, as being uh, a Chinese girl who is stubborn and curious and independent and adventurous. I've, I never saw any films growing up that I could relate to. I was not, I'm, I, I was never the into Disney princesses. It never made sense to have my whole life be revolving around a Prince Charming and. Um, you know, it's 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 it really important for young girls to see something else, see a different version of a of a young woman, and I think that's what this film does. And what is it about the story specifically that drew you? I mean, it's it's so it's it's more like what didn't. It's so I lived with my grandma in China when I was sixteen. I. Um, I, I have a, my brothers and my family are very similar to Jin and Pang, and just overall the, the theme of the film, which is, um, is, is, is learning more about yourself and learning how to deal with grief and adversity and communication and, um, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> I'm just dying. Um, but it's also, um, yeah, it's just, it's just a like, really warm, heart, heartfelt film. Talk about how beautiful it is because visually it's stunning. The craftsmanship behind it, every single frame, I like was so ignorant to like what, uh, to, the, to the amount of work that it takes for an animation film. And I believe they had proprietary technology. I mean, I didn't, even with the fur of, of, of Everest, and uh, there's like a team of all of these people just to make the fur movement incredible. 
Um, and it kind of, the whole film is set in this magic hour that is so beautiful. It's, it's just a stunning film. Tell you about my dogs. How much time do you have? <laughs> yeah, what I love about the film is it's it's about three Chinese kids. It's it's about a, a young Chinese woman kind of dealing with grief and finding herself and finding her relationship with other people and with her family. And it totally takes place in China. It shows off how beautiful China is, but it's also not about that at all. There's so much of the Chinese culture is featured, but it's not like the movie's called Young Chinese Girl Goes Across China. It's called Abominable. It's, called, it's about, it normalizes a culture that for me is normal in a way that I think is important for the industry to move forward. That it's not, it's featured, but it's, it's so much more about that. Like being Asian in industry isn't a, isn't a trend. Um, which I feel like it can tend to be, whereas this one is just a really authentic story and it happens to take place in this beautiful country and we're seeing a different version of China. It's, you know, we're seeing all these amazing, like, usually you think of cityscapes, which is portrayed so well, but it's also so much of, of other parts that we don't really get to see. So I love that it's so much about that, but then also not at all. It's also a story about kind of coming into your own as a young woman and as, as young kids and um, discovering family, so. Tell you about my dogs. How much time do you have? I can show you <laughs> thousands of pictures. My dogs are a hybrid of of, of Everest, kind of, because I have a French bulldog, and then they're just very. I also grew up with Tibetan mastiffs, so really? yeah. So wow. I grew up with a, a Tibetan mastiff and then bull mastiffs. And Kitty, our Tibetan mastiff, was 200 pounds, wow. <laughs> and she was huge. And I used to like, you know ride her <laughs> like we would like saddle her I would I'm gonna probably get in trouble for that but I was very small um, but it, there's a lot of sequences in, in the movie where I'm like ah like flying all over Shanghai on Everest and so you know had a real life yeah went meta yeah Hi Cinemark fans, my name is Albert Tsai. And I'm Chloe Bennett. And we are Peng and Yi from DreamWorks Animation and Pearl Studios' newest film, Abominable, coming to theaters September 27th. Abominable is a beautiful film about three friends' journey to help a yeti named Everest find his way home find his way home and reunite him with his family, but they are also confronted by two greedy villains, Burnish and Dr. Zara, who who chase them all the way across the Himalayas and are determined to catch Everest. What are you doing here, Everest? Oh, he must be here to celebrate his upcoming movie, of course. It's just a few weeks away, remember? Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> well, you heard Everest. We got to go and get him ready for his big movie debut. So make sure you get your tickets today and join us for the big celebration on September 27th. Whoa! You can do magic? Oh, this is amazing! Let's go. Come on, Everest. Come on.